When I send a ray of light into the glass block, it does change speed as it enters the glass block. So if I send the ray of light in like so, it does change speed at this surface here, um, and it changes direction as well. So it hits the surface at an angle, and it refracts. And in this case, it's slowing down. So it hits the glass and slows down, and that means that the ray of light um, skews towards the normal. So it comes out here, over here, and it's closer to the normal. Um, it doesn't change direction at this side. It does change speed, but it leaves along the normal. So it leaves at 90 degrees. So if you think about it, when it entered, it entered at an angle, and this side would slow down. This side of the ray slows down before this side, and that causes it to slew round. But when it leaves, it all s speeds up at the same time. It all gains uh, speed as it leaves the glass, um, and uh, so it's all at the same time. So there's no change in direction. When we look at it the other way, we can have the opposite effect. So when the light goes into the glass, um, again, it slows down, but it's entering along the normal. It's entering at 90 degrees to the surface because this is a semicircle. Um, and that means that it changes speed, but it doesn't change direction. But when it gets to here, um, and it leaves the glass, you can see it has changed direction. So this was the angle it came in at, and it's leaving at a different angle. So when it speeds up, it's changed direction, it's refracted, and in this case, as it's sped up, it's refracted away from the normal. So what we're going to do is investigate what happens when the, um, the light is speeding up, so the refraction is away from the normal, as opposed to what we looked at before when it was refracting towards the normal. So first of all, obviously, what we need to do, as before, is to draw in some incident rays. So I'm going to just use my protractor again, and I'm just going to mark in, so 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. These are my incident rays. So once again, I've drawn in my incident rays going from 10, 20, 30, all the way around to 80 degrees. And now what I'm going to do is use my ray box again to send uh, light along. So first of all, I'm going to place the glass block onto the outline I drew in earlier. Um, and then I'm just going to put some marks where the light is entering, uh, sorry, leaving the glass block. So. What you can see here is it comes along at 10 degrees, and when it comes here, um, it's been refracted, and I'll put a little mark up here, so it's, there's where it's leaving. And you can see straight away it's bending away from the normal, so it's g coming out at a greater angle than it left. So this is the next one at 20 degrees, at 30 degrees, Now at 40 degrees, um, the light is really very close to the surface of the um, glass block. And you can actually see some partial reflection here coming off as well. Um, if I go up to 50 degrees, actually no light escapes at all. So no light beyond 40 degrees has escaped this glass block at all. It's all been reflected off the surface. This is a very efficient way of um, reflecting light um, by sending it in and bouncing it off the surface of the glass. It works if you move it to a particular angle, so at 40 degrees you can see it was uh, leaving the glass, but if I go slightly further then it skims the surface. This angle is called the critical angle. So the angle where it just skims the surface is called the critical angle, and if I go beyond that critical angle you can see that the light is reflected. It doesn't come out the glass at all. And we call this total internal reflection. So when I send light in along here, um, you can see that the light is reflecting down here. Um, so it reflects off the surface at this point and then bounces along the glass. Um, and no light has escaped at all. And as I say, this is very efficient. You can actually use this in optical fibres to send pulses of light, flashes of light, hundreds of kilometres down an optical fibre um, without and still be able to read it at the other end. It's still bright enough for it to read because so little um, light escapes from the surface. So again, this is called total internal reflection. So here, 
when we get beyond the critical angle at 40 degrees, so there's around about the critical angle, you can see the light is almost skimming the surface. It also breaks up the light into colors, a uh, little bit of reflection. But when I go beyond that, when I go to a bigger angle of incidence, no light is escaping at all. And that is called the critical angle, the angle where it changes from um, being refracted to being reflected is called the critical angle. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to, as I did before, um, draw in these angles so I can um, just record the values. So this is the one that came in at 10 degrees and that's the angle of refraction. So the angle of incidence here was 10 degrees and you can see that the angle of refraction is bigger. And then that's at 20 at 30 and then finally at 40 degrees. So we sent the light in at 10 degrees but it's come out at a bigger angle so you can measure it with a protractor and this has come out at 17 degrees so it went in at 10 it's come out at 17. The next one went in at 20 it's come out at 29 degrees the next one went in at 30 and it's come out at 48 degrees and then at 40 degrees it came out at 75 degrees. So it's bent away from the normal. This was the trajectory when it went into the boundary so as it sped up, remember there's no refraction here because it's entering at right angles so um, it uh, then bends away from the normal as it speeds up and it's you can see that it's gone from 10 to 17.